Vegetal management. See, uh, when we are suspecting an infection, there is, shouldn't be any, no visiting time. We never know who is incubating what. Uh, and yeah, the first line was actually missed. Uh, Staphylococcus aureus, the most common niche for a Staphylococcus aureus, anterior nares. Okay, it, it is the reservoir. Anterior nares are the reservoir. So anyone can carry that. Okay, so hence, no visiting time is the policy. But if you, uh, if at all, you can uh, use a view, viewing box which is created uh, in front of the NICU for uh, to let them see. But if you, it is mandatory to allow, then allow only parents. Okay, after rounds and that too with proper hand hygiene and protective clothing. Okay, that is called protective clothing. Okay, so and then if any active infection is suspected, please they should not be allowed into the NICU. Then infected and outbound units should be managed in isolation room, as I already told you. And NICU, it is a cell phone free zone. A cell phone is the most uh, commonly used uh, gadget nowadays, which carries a lot of organisms on its surface, okay? So hence, it should be a cell phone free zone. Okay, now we are coming to the active surveillance. What is active surveillance specific to Staphylococcus aureus? And this is the latest guidelines in 2021 by CDC. So if there is an increased incidence of Staphylococcus infection in your unit, okay, either endemic or an outbreak, okay, or there is a health associated transmission, then you have to identify those newly colonized patients. First of all, identify them, okay, at regular intervals. Okay, how regular? It depends upon, again, your unit policy. It can be weekly or twice in a week. Okay, that is what is the guidelines is. Then, if any outbound infant or uh, other newborn care units, if they are shifted from their newly admitted uh, patients, if they are, they have to identify for any colonized patients. Means you have to identify in that unit if there is any colonized patients. Okay, then if you suspect that promptly isolate them from other babies okay then how to do active surveillance so it is again you can use two methods one is culture based yeah i have uh -huh. see mrsa what is the drug of choice vancomycin okay vancomycin linozolid oral if you can if you want to use you can use uh, linozolid okay and other drugs, which I means vancomycin resistant organisms, which we use like ticoplanin, uh, tigecycline, daptomycin, those those are also helpful in MRSA, but we do not go on the higher end antibiotics because we want to save them. If at all, we are suspecting VRSA. So we use, uh, for MRSA, we use vancomycin or linozolid. Hope I answered your question. Now, so either it should be, again, coming back, either it should be culture-based, or polymerase chain reaction, Polymer, uh, polymerase chain reaction detection methods. Now, what is the difference between these two? The polymerase chain reaction is, in, it has increased sensitivity over culture, but then it is expensive, okay? It is a better sensitive, a better sensitive test, PCR. But culture has an advantage of lower cost, and then you have the isolates on, on your culture plate, and then you can do molecular typing and susceptible tests. Means if at all you are having that organism, then you can go ahead with susceptible testing. But that that advantage is not given by PCR. But definitely there is a higher sensitivity with PCR. So uh, there is increased tendency to go for PCR in case of Staphylococcus aureus, according to the latest CDC guidelines. So what are the specimen to be collected for active surveillance? So as I told you, anterior nares is the highest yield gives the highest yield. So anterior nares, nares, you collect the specimen from anterior nares. But you can use other sites also. And if you are collecting from samples from additional sites, two to three sites per patient, there is increased sensitivity. The test, the surveillance test is more sensitive. Okay. So what are the other sites which we can use? One is umbilicus, rectum, axilla, throat, perirectal area, groin, these are the common sites and any clinically relevant wounds or drains which are present. Okay. If any of these are present, 
you can culture from there, those also. So if you culture from multiple sites, the sensitivity is better. So these are the specimen, color, uh, specimen collection. So now you have detected some colonization in your unit. So what do you do? Then we decolonize them. Now, this is the latest guideline. How far and how frequently it is not universally uh, accepted. Nothing is universally accepted and the proper gu guidelines have not come. But then there is uh, there is a universal um, uh, I have another question. In case of brain fluid, is staphylococcus staph in aureus is infectious? Sorry, I couldn't get your question. In case of brain fluid, is tough or yes is infectious hope you can uh, retype the question i am not able to understand it fine uh, decolonization uh, see targeted decolonization has to be done this if you target the population means those who are you are suspecting uh, those who are infectious or those who are in isolation rooms or those who are outbound so you target them and then give appropriate infection prevention and control measures. This is, see, this is colonization. This is not infection, okay? What we are talking about is colonization, not infection, okay? So, so you decolonize them, okay? So, if you are suspecting any ongoing healthcare uh, transmission, then you decolonize that. If your targeted decolonization is, has failed, okay, and the... Uh, issue has been unresolved then you use universal decolonization on all the babies now what is the advantage of it it is more feasible and easier means you need not identify them okay isolate them and then uh, yeah isolation is required but then you need not identify or group them okay so this is more feasible and easier to implement but then there isn't any additional benefit and the additional benefit is unclear. The studies have shown there isn't any additional benefit. So targeted decolonization is the first line of treatment. Then if you are unable to resolve the issue, then only go ahead with the universal decolonization. And now what are the agents used? The chlorhexidin bathing for all the way, uh, very low birth weight babies with central venous or peripheral venous catheters. Okay, any peripheral venous catheters. Okay, so those babies has to be the, these are the babies with targeted who are targeted okay now what are the agents used Mu, mupir, uh, one is chlorhexidin the second one is mupir, uh, mupirisin now you use uh, them on nares anterior nares thrice daily then umbilicus eroded skin and wounds okay these are uh, mupirisin used over these areas to help in decolonization now there is another drug which is called octanidin but it is not approved by US FDA at present. Hmm? So this is decolonization. Now, the most important, you educate your healthcare workers through pamphlets or regular meetings, okay? And then um, all this has to be done properly and it has to be, educational material is to be available for to all the healthcare workers to know what is going on in your, First of all, universal precautions, it should be separate. And what, what organisms is endemic in your area, in your NICU, and what, how to prevent them. Proper hand wash techniques, it has to be reiterated again and again and show, demonstrated, and re-educated. And ask them to have definitely have a mock drill. Okay, so that is how you educate them. Now, continuing, this is interactive programs that, as I told you, you first demonstrate them and ask them to show it back to you. Then, awareness programs, okay, and control of specific infectious agents, whichever is uh, endemic in your NICU, those infectious agents you have to again concentrate and more. So, this is how you educate the healthcare workers. Now, uh, we are coming to an end. So, here. What is the take-home message? Prevention. Prevention is the key for Staphylococcus aureus. Okay. Now, what all we do? All NICU staff should be familiar with the infection control programs to minimize the infection risk of staff and the patients. Then, strict hygiene, uh, hand hygiene, and five moments of hand hygiene before. So, you know the five, five moments of hand hygiene, right? Before, 
touching the uh, patient then after touching the patient then before uh, doing any aseptic pro procedures then after touching uh, the surroundings uh, and the fifth and final is after touching any infectious fluids or drains or anything or anything you are suspecting uh, you are at risk okay then any before any invasive procedure please do appropriate aseptic technique in appropriate aseptic te te technique then handling the neonates should be minimized minimal number of hand, uh, hand uh, number of times the baby should be handled equipment and supplies should be should not be shared in between the infants and it has to be properly disinfected and used then strict contact precautions for staphylococcus aureus visitor management is most important active surveillance and decolonization if you are suspecting staphylococcus aureus outbreak in your uh, unit then educate and reiterate regarding the proper techniques